everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland, the place to get the inside scoop on Icelandic nature, history, culture, and language. My name is Jules, and I'm back with another interview for the All Things Iceland podcast, which is now coming on to the YouTube video format. Super excited about that. And thank you to everyone for the feedback on the last video. I'm glad people are enjoying seeing my interaction with the guests on the show and just hearing these variety of experiences here in Iceland. The person today that I had the honor of interviewing is Gunnar Freyr and he is Icelandic even though he actually didn't grow up here and he goes into that a bit and on Instagram he is a big influencer there. He has over 360,000 followers and is known as the Icelandic Explorer. And what I find really fascinating about his life is that he spins it, how he makes his living, is going around Iceland and sometimes Greenland taking amazing photos and videos. And in fact, he's captured some moments that have gone viral, pictures for instance, and we talk about that. We also talk about the fact that he went from having an office job, a really stressful one, to now living this super adventurous life. And he gives tips for people who are interested in making that transition. He also talks about his journey just getting there, as well as he gives some great advice for how to capture the Northern Lights, whether you're using your smartphone or a camera, a separate camera like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, which is awesome because I feel like this is one of the questions that a lot of people ask because they want to make sure that when they see the Northern Lights, they too can capture that moment and do it as best they can. And if they can get as close as possible to some of the professional photos that they've seen, why not? And let me know in the comments which part of the interview you enjoyed hearing, whether it's one thing or many things, just because it's really awesome to hear what you're finding to be insightful or just interesting. All right, so let's get to the interview. Go this game tune. Good night. <laughs> hi, thank you for joining me. Hi, hi. <laughs> uh, thank you so much yeah, for having my me. My pleasure. <laughs> I'm super excited about this, mainly because I've been following you on Instagram for quite a while, and it's amazing to see how, where you, like, I, I don't know for your beginning, so this is going to be definitely part of kind of like getting an understanding of your journey, but to know where you are right now, meaning like over 360,000 followers on Instagram and you're doing like awesome work with different companies like it's just it's really inspiring to see and well thank you so much that's very good yeah my pleasure <laughs> and it's well deserved for sure so I'm just kind of curious about your journey from you know being a person that kind of is you know most people don't know about to all of a sudden you're known for your amazing photos and and content creation and an influencer basically here in Iceland yeah, yeah. Well, uh, again, thank you so much. That's way too good. <laughs> it's always nice to hear, like, because you kind of like when you're just living it yourself, you just sometimes get like used to like the, you know, you always just feel like you're you. So you don't always kind of like feel, you know, the way that whatever you do is kind of like having influence on people. Yeah. Right? And it's always nice to hear, uh, you know, when people actually like really kind of notice it and appreciate it and kind of have this kind of positive influence by your work. So that's very nice. Thank you. So where should I start? Uh, what, uh... Well, where, <laughs> what, what were you doing before becoming a full-time creator? Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, I'm, and I'm, I might add just a little intro to that too. Yeah. So basically like I'm an uh, Icelander, but I was born and raised in Denmark. Um, so both my parents are Icelandic and I was born in Denmark and I grew up there and lived there until I was 27. Okay. And um, and actually I studied business at the business school in, in Denmark and did a master's at the business uh, business school in Copenhagen. Great. And uh, I went to uh, work in a large auditing and consulting firm. So, oh. so basically um, uh, like uh, I was always kind of had this dream set out to uh, work in the corporate world and climb the corporate mm -hmm. ladder. I thought that's going to be exactly me. And I have to admit that at the same time, I just didn't really know what I wanted. So it's like, okay, well, you know, um, like doing something accounting business, you know, oh yeah, you will always have a job. And, and my parents, they had, you know, a bit more of a roller coaster with their own businesses uh, when we were children. So I was kind of like, you know, 
you know, heavily influenced by that, uh, by that experience. And uh, I just wanted to get something, okay, like uh, this is going to be, you know, safe, good job and everything. Yeah. And so I finished the master's and I was working at, and it's called PwC. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's the largest auditing and consulting firm um, in that industry. And uh, I was working there for three, a little over three years. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was, was like a lot of work. So I was working stress. 80 hours sometimes yeah, a week, wow. a lot of stress, a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, but it was also, it's kind of like, it was both good and like, uh, it was some nice things too, but it was definitely like, you know, very intense, yeah. but there was like some fun memories of me biking in the suits, like to clients with a suit and tie on this bicycle. With my computer Which is a very Danish thing to so do. Some heavy mem- <laughs> yeah, very, very Danish reality for sure. Um, but there are, of course, some happy, like, yes, yeah, so, like some happy memories like that. But overall, like, it was very draining. And, and also, this, I, I, I really didn't feel that I was particularly good. Like, like um, I'm good at many things, I would say. And I'm very good at kind of just like, you know, making work what the kind of cards I'm dealt with yeah. or whatever I kind of find the environment I find myself within. So I was always like working very hard. But it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so talented at this. And I'm just like, you know, acing it and everything. So, like, I, you know, had a lot of, you know, hard work put into it and still didn't really feel that great about yeah. it, honestly. Um, and then, you know, the, the corporate world can also be a bit tough in terms of like salaries and over hours and bonuses and all these things. And I just like, you know, felt screwed over and I felt kind of very unfulfilled. So it's a mix of those yeah. things. And then I, I wanted to do something else. And uh, Kasia, my girlfriend, she's Polish. And we met uh, at university in Denmark yeah. too. She's so studying philosophy. and. Uh, and uh, we were both kind of like in this place where we just really wanted to make a change and we had this like dream of doing something dream of travel and dream of like doing business yeah and and i had traveled a lot like before that too like we started we moved to iceland but um i had like slowly kind of started at the same time build this this interest in photography mm. and like bought my first like uh, dslr which was very exciting back yeah. then so it's like a total rookie like newbie camera today <laughs> but it was very very big for me back then i remember and i had like my first 50 millimeter lens that i was so excited about and uh, and then yeah we just like okay we were like we need to do something else and so we decided okay we're just gonna like we will really want to go travel so the idea was to go travel around uh, like around the world the southeast asia so we was like okay start, so we're starting to plan like a trip around the world yeah. and then finish in iceland so we were just mm. like okay pack everything up and actually we just sold everything that we had uh, back in Copenhagen. We just had one, ended up with one suitcase. Wow. Each. And it's so easy because there are so many like international students coming there and they're all looking for the same things on these things. So they, they will buy anything. Yeah. Which you would sell. It's hilarious. I... So like we sold, we sold everything yeah. and uh, they ended up with super trimmed down inventory. Yeah. I think it's amazing that you could have one suitcase. That was the part that I was like, wow. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, tried. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's not, not going so well today, honestly. <laughs> and also with gear and everything, I don't, I'm not very, very good at packing light. Yeah. But I think the part was also that we needed the money. So, okay, we could just sell yep. it. Because we the money. Okay. So it's a pretty good cleanup, honestly. And I, I think, yeah, and half of the bag was actually suits that were too nice to get rid of or sell. So it's like I still have those like <laughs> fancy suits that Aww. I bought back then. <laughs> so, uh, so then, yeah, then we traveled around Southeast Asia and we kind of had like a one-way ticket to finish in Iceland. And I had always dreamed about living in Iceland since I was um, a child. Yeah. I would come here for Christmas or summer break and spend like often two weeks here um, at my grandparents mm-hmm. um, and with my uncle, by the way, who started, who worked as an auditor and had his own firm and was driving a Porsche and was like a very big robot. Wow, so that's a, okay. That's yeah. a big influence influence of also like okay my uncle you know he's like such a cool dude i thought you know and, and uh, he's driving this fancy car and everything like they're living the sweet yeah. life so it's like that was like also like a big you know kind of attributing factor back then yeah. but so we came here to iceland and the um we we kind of like um we actually had an idea of, of starting a business here in iceland okay. first and so this was also kind of like pre pre travel around the world and everything so okay we're going to travel and, you know, kind of really just like, you know, do like a serious palate cleanser before we start a new life. And uh, and the idea was actually to make ski in Iceland <laughs> and then maybe like, I don't know, add it as a business to Denmark and yeah. something like that. So uh, and it was hilarious. So we were like really considering that for for a while. But while we were traveling, then also like I was taking so many pictures and I was enjoying it so much. And it was like this mm. kind of like passion for photography just kind of took off also during that trip. So it's also amazing how anything you do can just like spark something that you didn't expect and I, and I and I love that and there's always something in life you know you 
like very few things are ever totally in vain right even though you often think like oh my god why did i do this or whatever and then suddenly like you know years down the road or whatever it is it somehow comes back to you with some some meaningful thing and so and so that was like from this trip like you know we just got this pat like taste like you know passion for travel was not only like okay we we, we kind of had the spark to travel but then we just enjoyed it so much that you know it's just amazing so I really want to continue travel and like be free and like be my own be my own boss mm -hmm. and be able to work from anywhere and I had this huge interest in photography and that especially was kind of rekindled with travel yeah. and taking like I don't know how many photos and and videos and I, yeah I bought the camera and the GoPro and everything and it's like back in back in the day when the GoPro was really popular and you would go with your selfie stick and you would go like in the in the beach and scuba diving and stuff yeah. like that it was really fun but it's it, it, it a different time and but so then we came to Iceland and it's like, okay, well, we had this original dream of making ski, but now we just loved so much also traveling and wanted to kind of keep on traveling here in Iceland. And so we just started like, like yeah, traveling all around Iceland, taking pictures. And I just put that on my Instagram. And then that just kept on. And, I, and somehow like, because I also started um, like, yeah, business and marketing um, before I did like the audit uh, master's. Yeah. So like... When first time I tried Instagram, I was like, oh my God, this is so, so fucking cool. Sorry, that's weird on the podcast, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> you didn't say anything in advance, so I'm just going to take a little bit. Go sorry. for it. Be sorry free. for everyone who's listening and watching. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so um, no, I lost, my, lost the track here now because I was so excited about this work. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'll so, do it on your um, Instagram. So, yeah, so I just started putting, I was going, started going really well. Um, and this is back and in yeah, the day so on Instagram, too, right? First time I got right? Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that was like back in 2014. I was so excited about Instagram, and it's like, wow, this is totally amazing. Like, and it wasn't only because, uh, like, of, of of course, you can see so amazing things, so many amazing things that you wouldn't see otherwise, yeah. and you could meet so many interesting people that you would never have kind of encountered if it wasn't for uh, social media. So you could meet people, and back then that felt very new. Like now we kind of almost, uh, I think almost a little bit take it for granted, mm -hmm. or we don't really think about it so much anymore, but. Back then, I was thinking it's so amazing to be able to just like uh, like meet people like this guy like who I've been following. He has so many amazing photos, and he's come to Iceland. And like, okay, should we meet there? And I thought it was just so fascinating to be able to meet all these interesting people from around the world. Yeah. And and at the same time, it felt very entrepreneurial because you could just put something out there, and it was just kind of there for the world. And like I always th I thought about websites and blogs, like even way way back in the day and it never it felt right for me and then like instagram said like, wow this is so much fun it's so cool and so yeah and then i had at the same time this photography part of me you know was taking off so uh you know they just kind of like merged when we were traveling here in iceland and my instagram started growing and that was like back in 2015 so we we, we kind of started here in iceland in 2015 okay. after traveling and I had like a kind of soft landing job with uh, doing some auditing work okay. uh, for a fish company, fisheries. Uh, so I was auditing fish processes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the most exciting uh, and it was also very lonely, Aww. but it was still like, you know, decent salary so I could afford some gear and travels and things like that. So that was great. Yeah. And, and I just really loved living in Iceland and, you know, I, I like, in Denmark, you don't have this kind of like contact with nature as you do with like here in Iceland. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just, yeah, I felt it was so amazing. And I never knew how nature would have such a positive influence on me mm -hmm. as a person and on my well-being. And the, the like, I love always the weather. Like even though it was like a crazy blizzard, I was so excited. <laughs> like, uh, and I still am so excited. And uh, so I, I loved so many things about it. And then, yeah, just being out, out in nature in Iceland. And, taking photos and posting it because I was super excited about Instagram. And yeah, that just kind of like 2015 started like evolving. And uh, and I think in end of 2015, I had around 10,000 followers, right. something like that. Five or 10, I don't remember. Um, and then it's like a snowball effect on social media. So once you have like a certain size, you know, do you have a bigger reach, then more people will find mm -hmm. you as long as you're active, obviously. Um, uh, and that just kept on growing. And then 2016, um, so I worked in this kind of soft landing job for around a yeah. year. And 2016, I got my first paid work uh, for photography and social media. Nice. And uh, and that was like, a, it turned out to be kind of like a retainer project. Uh, and then I would, so I'll basically have like my, my bills kind of covered uh, every month. Nice. Um, 
and then then basically there's no looking back <laughs> you're like gotta make this work this is this is it like he felt so passionate about doing this specific thing yeah, yeah. and was it had, when you were in iceland like meaning when you stopped uh your trip and you were in iceland were you like yeah. this is where i want to base my photography and, and videography because there are icelanders yeah. that travel to other places and do you know like travel photography or whatever else so it's kind of interesting that you did go and, and do yeah. the travel thing but then you came here and we're like iceland i'm gonna focus on here yeah exactly so i was very much thinking like you know what am i gonna do on, like, on instagram and i also thought like i wanted to uh, like kind of and that's it kind of merged with the idea of uh, the Icelandic explorer with my account mm -hmm. as well. Um, kind of merged with the idea of kind of like, you know, me exploring Iceland for the first time as an Icelander. Mm. Because I felt like I was, you know, seeing all these things as a local here in Iceland. Um, and at the same time, also a foreigner. Because, I, you know, I'm basically kind of like, I consider my less, myself less Danish now than I do back then. But I consider myself Danish Icelandic yeah. always. So I always like felt a little bit like a foreigner here, and I I still do in in many yeah. ways, even though I'm also Icelandic. Um, so it, it was kind of like the concept of yeah ex exploring Iceland for the first time through my photography. Yeah, awesome. And 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 that then then Iceland obviously you know made only sense. <laughs> and then like I started, you know, it, I've softened up a little bit about it, but uh, now there's another reason why I don't travel. Like I. I probably would like if if I was like yeah didn't have children and we didn't have it like so many commitments. Yeah. Yeah. As, you have twins video. now. Like, yes, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we have newborn twins born in the summer, and uh, so that's and we have our oldest son also. So yeah. there are uh, quite a lot of commitments here. So travel obviously needs to be kind of like well thought through also, yeah. and uh, so and really like. Yeah, makes sense. And here, Iceland is so easy because you just you know drive half an hour or one hour, and you're just in incredible nature. I mean, not talking about two to four hours. It's just crazy. Yeah. But it's just you know effortless to get get somewhere really amazing here in Iceland. So now logistically, it makes a lot of sense, and there's always more to see and do in Iceland. But at the same time, I always had this kind of wanderlust bird in my belly, uh, or like butterflies or whatever. So like you know, I definitely would like to also expand, and I think. Like now we have the newborn babies, and I think if we didn't have like have had the babies now, our our son is old enough to travel like really well. He's very excited about it. Then we probably would. We were actually planning on doing like uh like uh during my wife's parental leave like a road trip in in the U.S. or something like that. Nice. So like get a camper van, like take for three months and drive around. Okay. And then I would probably incorporate you know a lot of photography and projects into that but now so now because of the pandemic we're also stuck with iceland anyway. <laughs> you're stuck with and, iceland but for I, you <laughs> yeah exactly which is not a, not a bad thing <laughs> which is actually really nice because um it's a it's a very interesting time to travel like for good and bad i would say but it's a very interesting time to travel yeah iceland right for now, sure for those who actually i mean you get you can get all those moments where you know you have the waterfall to yourself mm. and experiment with shops yes. and things like that yeah so okay. <laughs> you find this kind of like uh, serenity in these totally touristy, like classic spots in Iceland that you, that I've, you, that you never found before. Yeah. So like you stand and you just like for one hour, you're alone at Skogafoss and just look up and it's like, and, and you really feel why these places are so like, you know, why they're so popular. Yeah. But at the same time, you just get to really take it all in. So it's, it's great. I mean, for that part, obviously it's not great for the economy and the tourist, yeah, yeah. You know, tourist economy yeah. and for the world and people's health and so on. There's a, there's a little silver yeah, lining for sure, nice. but yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Regarding your, you going out and being out in like the wilderness of Iceland, particularly like the highlands, crossing rivers, all that stuff, what are some of the challenges that you've faced? I mean, Icelandic weather is... <laughs> Yeah, iconic definitely. for being <laughs> variable <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the weather obviously like it's uh definitely like the first thing you know because you just never know like I, I i actually very rarely check the weather forecast mm -hmm. i just like gave up on looking at the weather interesting forecast. okay it's kind of it's pretty it's it's like unless you're planning like maybe one or two days ahead but like further it's pointless especially in the winter because the weather's changing all yeah. the time and you know the best weather forecast you have here in Iceland is looking out the window and like think okay <laughs> and then based on experience of what can happen okay but um so obviously the weather can be very challenging and because just kind of the elements uh, and conditions in Iceland they're tough like obviously just for getting around in the country mm -hmm. and they're also tough like you know in terms of staying warm and comfortable when you're outside and possibly for a long time um 
and like for example at night when you're shooting with all lights or something um obviously then it's mostly like cold but um it's also very tough on your uh, photography equipment mm. and gear so and clothing and everything so um i basically invest like in terms of getting around in iceland travel i invested yeah quite a lot of money into my setup so i have a have a modified uh, Land Rover Defender, mm -hmm. which can cross rivers and uh, it's really cool. And do pretty much everything. Yes, it's quite cool. And uh, I can turn it into a camper van also, Ooh. so I'm, uh, I can take down the seats and slide in the mattress. And I've used that now, like especially quite a lot during uh, this kind of COVID times we live in now, where you don't always necessarily want to stay in the hotel or where there are like people. Right. And then sleeping in the car is totally amazing. So. The Landy kind of does it all. So I drive my son to kindergarten. Oh, the you're like the I, cool so dad going to up the Highlands. Defender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually, I've actually had like one day and I was wondering what all the other parents were thinking like when they saw this car with the mattress because we had to like, and all the windows kind of blinded and everything. And I had like, and him in the front seat because he doesn't have airbags so I can drive with him in the front oh, seat so he was driving okay. with me and Landy I took him to kindergarten and the bed was in the back <laughs> filled with gear and stuff and then and then we we, we live in this like kind of like uh, like a neighborhood where it's kind of like I, I wouldn't say like it's it's a little bit fancy at least the, the people like they think they're a bit fancy so that you know we are very different than the rest <laughs> that we stand out totally here <laughs> but um, it's like a lot of Range Rovers and Tesla mm. and stuff and then it comes up this this like uh, this landy with the sleeper van inside it's like <laughs> definitely They're like are they living in their car <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly exactly it's like what is this guy do they actually because <laughs> there's so much stuff you could think yeah exactly. <laughs> with all the gear and everything. but you're, you're i'm so, sure your son um, is super excited so, about it he's like yes <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah he, he actually wanted to come with me when like that day on that trip and then he was asking when we come home, can we sleep in the oh. car instead of in the house? <laughs> That's super cute. I promised him that I, that we would, but after coming back from the trip, I was kind of yeah. tired of sleeping in the car. So it's like, okay, we'll do it some yeah. other time when there there's like when I haven't kind of already slept in the car. Yeah. Can you share one of your epic adventures? I mean, whether it was because I've seen it at times where it could be you or even others who are together on trips to like help each other just in case somebody gets stuck in a river or something like that. But what are, yeah, 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 yeah. what are one of your kind of like epic, meaning things went well and also things were just like, whew, glad we made it out. Or maybe yeah. something went wrong. Like what, what what's kind of happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's also kind of the sense of a, of a real adventure, I would say. So when, when you don't exactly know what's going to happen and normally when something like yeah, unexpected will happen. And that's also when like, you know, the kind of most, vivid memories are from and often where the most interesting photos are from too um so there i guess there are there are a few stories um one of the, like i think it's good to bring the kind of like my most famous story like that which is like where and that was actually not like there was an adventure that kind of came to me not the mm -hmm. other way around so sure. we we uh we used to live in, in downtown Reykjavik and uh, and um i was uh, yeah like it was in the winter and uh, it started snowing in the evening and then I woke up in the night to the sun, like it was totally still and you just hear like, it's kind of like, you have this kind of snow quietness. I don't know, like if it's really like snow kind of blocks all the sound, like, you know, when you have a very busy room, you know, it's kind of like, you know, there's no like noises around. Yeah. So it's like very quiet. And then I heard the sound of like a branch breaking in the backyard. It's like, what's going on? So like I went to look out and then there was actually part of the tree breaking under all the snow that was oh. uh, snowing. So it's like, and, uh, and that was like, that was in 2017 uh, when things kind of had started going like social media and everything was going quite well for me. And uh, and uh, it's like, oh my God, like, this is like totally Instagrammable and photographable. I have to go out. This is amazing. Yeah. So like I, I just like sprint like and and I get very kind of excited and carried away when there's like a moment like that. So it's like I, like, I couldn't get out of the door fast enough, basically. And uh, so I put on my overalls and my, yeah, my parka and the camera. And uh, luckily I just bought my first kind of serious camera, uh, like, you know, a couple of weeks before or something, which was very, very fortunate because it was in the middle of the night. So you needed pretty good equipment to shoot uh, during like that lighting. So I went out and it was like, uh, almost like a meter of snow it had just come Whoa. within like a few hours. So that was in 2017. It was the, the record snowfall uh, in Iceland for the past hundred years uh, that came that night. And then it's like, oh, and it's like, and I just ran out with the camera and walked around the whole city, did Instagram live, uh, 
while walking around in the blizzard, and it was like in a on a Saturday night, like turning to Sunday. Yeah. There was like a lot of people walking home from parties, and it was like very romantic, and it was super beautiful. And there are still people writing me sometimes that they were watching oh, uh, like awesome. my lives that night when I was walking around in the blizzard. And then I walked up this very uh, famous street in Reykjavik. Um, so Skolaverstir, where you have the rainbow street mm -hmm. also. And the and I was walking up, and then I see this couple like perfectly aligning, uh, and the church just in the background. And I just it was just like you know a split second or two seconds maybe or one second where they're just like walking, uh, perfectly aligned with the church. So it's like bang bang bang, <laughs> I got that shot. And uh, and then just like. I walked around with more distant stories and more photos and then went home to bed and I was like I knew like wow this is like such an, a useful thing like with all this snow it's like I have to post this like right like you know right away so like I think I just slept for an hour or something and then woke up and just like started importing all the yeah. photos and posted like a very unusual time of like six or seven like six or seven a.m. uh like I spending time on Instagram like normally I never post anything like that like during those mm -hmm. times because there's also all this reality behind it. what's a good posting time right and stuff. yeah and new, okay I need to get this out like before anyone else has posted anything. And at the same time, this was also like a banger photo that I got there with the couple in the church. So, um, so uh, yeah, that like kind of started going like really well on Instagram. And then um, I got a like a super random uh, DM from uh, BBC, mm. uh, like, and it just looked like it was just like some employee who worked there from their private accounts, like, oh, I was saw a photo about the blizzard, and we totally want to do a story about this. So. Uh, they, 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 they uh, and do you have more photos? And so I sent them the, the kind of main picture and more photos from mm -hmm. clients. And they did a story about this epic, uh, like blizzard, the most uh, snowfall in 100 years. And this kind of like very awesome photo that I captured. Yeah. And uh, and then like news out there from the entire world kind of featured that story. So this went totally viral nice. like, overnight. And uh, and this like very unusual, like that's why I say the adventure kind of came yeah. to me because I was just like, you know, you know, I didn't kind of seek it out, but it kind of uh, yeah, it, it out, whispered in your uh, ear. But obviously, you have to be ready for it. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 exactly. That is fascinating. So, uh, so I just went out, and then uh, yeah, they all started featuring it, and I had them all share my Instagram account, and like I don't know, again, like ten thousand followers the first what? day, and then like few thousands each day afterwards. That's so intense. like it was like twenty, thirty thousand followers, like in a in in a week probably from from wow. that night, which is totally awesome. amazing. Uh, yeah okay i i remember so this like photo a, uh, like, it, when it came out meaning like i didn't obviously yeah. I um i've only gotten to know you so your wife is a friend of mine <laughs> this is fyr people who don't know yeah. and also <laughs> small world in iceland huh? yeah. yeah yeah exactly it's a small world here in iceland so. <laughs> and so i've only gotten to know kind of more about you more recently but this picture i remember seeing it and i was like oh and you know what's funny i remember thinking to myself Oh, that must be a timed photo. Like I had no idea that you didn't. The couple was just yeah, some, some yeah. people that were walking. I thought it was you and, and Katya, um, and like you'd use yeah, a timer yeah. to make it because it, it it was so perfectly yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, what? Yeah. This is amazing. So yeah, so it's like a totally like uh, just like yeah, magical moment that really happened. And uh, and m most of my photography, like i have more and more moved into like plant plant photos and like doing also still life and flat lace and like yeah lifestyle photos that are more kind of staged. But most of the stuff I post on my Instagram um, is actually just like real kind of moments that just happen that mm. I just like either by driving or walking or cruising around or hiking or something and just like comes like that something you could never have thought of thought about that just like happened and I really love those things because uh, it's like of course like. Um, you know, it's so almost also really fun to create your own stuff and just let your creativity run mm -hmm. wild. But I really love these moments of just like, like I don't know, staying like in tune with your environment, mm -hmm. and just kind of taking in whatever comes to you, and and then seeing beautiful things in whatever. Yeah, happens. exactly. So and I, that, yeah, that was like totally the, like a yeah. A, and I love the fact that moment. this particular <laughs> adventure you're talking about is right in Reykjavik, right? <laughs> it's just like because you've yeah, been to so yeah. many amazing places in the country, and it's just like I mean, this one had such a huge exactly. impact on your life, of course. But it's just so fascinating yeah. that this is, you know, the one that is really like stands out for you because of of how it was yeah. in terms of record breaking and record breaking totally. for your account, record breaking for Iceland, like all these stuff, all this stuff. Exactly, and also the fact that on it, like, I really felt because there are a lot of people on Instagram who are like, you know, everybody's posting the same thing or going to the same yeah. spots and everything. And I, I, I love the fact that you have these sometimes these moments that only exist for like a very short period of time like nobody can recreate that right, yeah. uh, 
that happened that night, for example, and like, because the amount of snow is like totally crazy. So like, you would have to like make a very like digital kind of like <laughs> photo to to recreate it. I would say. So it's crazy because I have this picture that that nobody else can recreate like that. This is really yeah, cool. Um, it's awesome. And I think it feels like very unique. And obviously, the memory connected to it and everything makes it very unique. Yeah. So that was a, 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 a adventure, and where kind of there was a lot of unexpected things. But I've had obviously a lot of things. Yeah, in Iceland. So we often go. Um, exactly like you know if you go to the highlands you know couple, at least a couple of cars maybe like in case somebody gets into trouble yeah. Some, m m many places you can also go like alone um, because it's pretty easy but if you want to go like some really kind of like uh, like heavy uh, like uh, overlanding missions yeah. then you really need to be like two cars and uh, and it's also like way more fun and you can kind of stage more photos and yeah um, but it often then become equally much about the journey as much as like it is about creating photos and you know it just becomes like a life of its own which is truly amazing yeah. um but i have another story so um i so besides iceland i also most of my work that ha that i've done outside of iceland is in greenland mm. and uh, and i went to greenland uh, the first time in 2017 so the same year as the snow picture and that then i was sailing on this like uh, very old wooden schooners uh, yeah. from here in Iceland that has uh, you do a little advertisement from here they're called Norsey yeah. <laughs> and it's beautiful because uh, they are awesome and they have these beautiful uh, old wooden schooners like uh, that one of them is like 100 years old or close yeah. to and uh, and uh, they're in Husavik is that right sailing in the, it's, they're in Husavik yeah, yeah exactly um, uh, so they, they sail from Husavik to uh, East Greenland okay. uh, in the in the like uh, end or middle uh, mid of the summer okay. i would say middle in the summer because the the ice really first clears up mm -hmm. um like late late in summer so it's like late summer it's a very short season um, and um, so i went there on a trip uh, in it's called scorpio sound it's the largest fjord in the world and it's actually said that the iceberg that sunk the titanic is from oh okay uh, that's scary uh, so like <laughs> iceberg jokes were kind of hilarious and and you bump into a lot of icebergs when you're sailing there because it's a lot of ice, yeah, so it's like wow. not always funny during the night. You like you you're sleeping and you heard this huge bump and you you're like it's an ice you're just sailing into an yeah, iceberg. Wow. Like, obviously a small yeah, one, yeah, yeah. but it's like cruising, you know, by them. But then we also there was like um, I was on one schooner and they had two boats sailing together, uh, or like they have three, but one one had mechanical problems, so they they ended up having the one I'm on. And the broken one, we were kind of sailing together, and our boat ended up kind of towing. The oh wow! <laughs> okay. and, yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, and then and then we ran into this crazy storm, and uh, we were sailing in kind of this most epic part of the fjord, yeah. like really high mountains on both sides. They are like two kilometer mount tall mountains basically, Whoa. like really narrow, and you have filled with icebergs in between. And then, yeah, first it's like this, yeah, like. They, um, it's actually before the storm arrives, we just have like really strong wind, so it's very good for sailing. And the, the engine is broken down of the other ship, so they sail um, with sails. Uh, and I managed to get this really, really cool photo on full sail in this very epic fjord, like big waves, icebergs all around, and like perfectly aligned with some spiky mountains that only happen like just for like a few nice. seconds also. Uh, and then later that night, yeah, the, the, they couldn't sail anymore. We had to try to tow the boat again and the rope was breaking and it was like huge waves and icebergs all around yeah. so it was like it was pretty intense yeah. so i i uh, the, the, i had pretty vivid dreams of that trip after after coming home but the, yeah that was uh, also fun no so most of m many of the ones include something ha interesting happening with the weather and the conditions mm -hmm. uh, both in iceland yeah and greenland is really awesome it's, it's a great place too because from iceland whether you're sailing i mean most people don't sail <laughs> but you can take a flight quite easily to greenland from iceland yeah yeah so, exactly yeah. you can yeah uh, it's obviously worth keeping in mind that it's a bit of a like you have to have planned it quite mm -hmm. well or work with like a local operator if you really want to go somewhere because you can't really like you can fly there but you can't like it's not nice in iceland it's so good because you can just drive yeah. like the ring and just get all around and in greenland there are no roads like that you have to sail or helicopter or fly yep. to one county yeah i was fortunate to go to greenland in uh, 2018 i believe it was for like a nine day trip and it was awesome but yeah they was like okay yeah, so we're gonna so get on good. this boat so we could go over to this next yeah, town exactly. and i was like <laughs> and like you can't drive around you know i was like wow this is no no exactly yeah. super rugged you can dog sled i forgot about that mm -hmm. part and you can dog sled yeah yeah that's true that's true that's yeah it. in the winter no, time you can <laughs> way to get around across the fjord which is really awesome 
so yeah, when yeah, the sea is beautiful. frozen. So okay. And what about yeah. your favorite places in Iceland? Because obviously, you know, there are going to be places that stick out to you, and probably that's hard. Maybe it's like trying to, you know, pick your favorite child or something. But so if you have many, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's very hard to choose, and it's also like I feel like it's very, it's also quite seasonal. I would say. Um, so. Uh, and and also connected to like on a kind of like internal like uh, like mindset I would mm. say so sometimes like depending on how you feel or where you are in life you need a little bit of this or you need a little bit of that you know sometimes describe like sometimes you just need like to be like for example in the remote west fjords when there's just nobody and you have this very like vast deep fjords and like yeah. beautiful mountains and 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 there's some kind of like magic in the air so sometimes like that could be an example like sometimes you just it just like fits perfectly with either where you are in life or kind of what you need after like a certain experience or what or whatever. So it varies. Um, what my favorite spots are, um, I would say, uh, I would say that, and it also varies because I'm kind of like always seeking out new yeah. places. So like very often it's like the last one that you were super excited about is the favorite yeah, spot. No. And of course at the same time I have some like classic go to spots that are like are just really amazing always, but. Right now, I find East Iceland is really, really, really mm. nice. Like, uh, I love going there. Um, and there, it's like a little bit like the West Fjords, but I would say the lands, they're, they're like kind of even more epic places there. Like, it does maybe, ha like in the West Fjords, it's just like this magic of being so far away from everything. And you're like close to Greenland, and uh, it's like you have a lot of wildlife all around mm -hmm. you. But in East Iceland, you have like uh, some so many beautiful places, and it's extremely yeah. epic. Like, uh, um, like there's this one waterfall, for example, that I love in in Mjölvefjord, so the the kind of like narrow or yeah narrow mm -hmm. fjord, and uh, it's called uh, Klipprekkefossa. So it's like the waterfall that climbs up the mountain. Ooh. So you have like, and I've kind of dubbed it the never-ending waterfall. So you have one fall, and then the next one, and next one, next one, next one. I don't know, twenty waterfalls, and just wow, like, that's water. amazing. It's super, super cool. That's really nice. So. Uh, I, I kept like a drone photo uh, video or uh, video where I'm just flying up and you just keep on seeing one waterfall. After yeah, one. it's super cool. Okay, if you hear some, so that's like one of my favorite spots. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I have to say that's one of like the spots that I'm kind of very excited about because I love going to East and then like going there because this whole area is also beautiful. And yeah, and absolutely. Um, I was gonna say if you hear any rumbling, so they decided to do some construction literally just right now. <laughs> place so yeah. <laughs> classic such is life yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah yeah totally yeah you can't control those things so unfortunately you can plan all you want yeah, but then yeah. that's just not how life is comes, but yeah. <laughs> in regards to eBison, mm -hmm. though i i agree with you it's amazing i've not had the chance to explore it as much as i would i'd like to mainly because the last time we were there for a couple of days it was foggy like it was just like it was so, such thick fog yeah. and that can happen too yeah, and, a, lot, a lot of fog there mm -hmm. yeah. and and it's very moody also, which is also nice, like, uh, but the fog obviously can be a bit yeah. problematic for, for some Yeah, exactly. We were driving in, like, fog that was so thick that we were just trying to go slow enough because it was still summertime. So we didn't want to hit any sheep that might yeah. be on the road. So we're just, like, exactly. cruising yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like being in a ghost yes, story, yes. you know? <laughs> it was, I've never yeah. been in fog that, and that actually ha that, that, that has uh, That has happened to me once, yeah. actually. And even, like, I very unfortunate to once have uh, exactly hit a sheep like that because it was on the it was terrible so yeah. it was extremely like and it, and it haunts me sometimes it, that's because you said there's like a ghost story so it was on the south on the ring road on the south coast yeah so it's like on the main road so you drive obviously like normal speed and i wasn't driving like very fast but it was in the middle of the night and i think just the animals were very uh like kind of confused also because yeah. like, it's bright at night but they were i think they were very tired or something yeah. and then the fog and I was driving maybe like 70 kilometers per hour or like quite slow, I would say. Um, and then just all of a sudden, she just jumped out of the road yeah. right in front of me. And I just, I couldn't like, if I, if I had to man like maneuver that fast, I would have just like crashed on the side. So it's like, okay, I just have to, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do anything. And yeah, it's very, it's not. No, fun. it's so not easy. It's definitely good yeah, to exactly. go slow in the fog. And I, and I, but I drive a, a lot. So like it's bound, like something's going to happen sooner or later. Um, with so many miles on yeah the but it's definitely no not. and I, I've, I've told people about this in the past about the fact that you have to like the sheep have right away but in certain circumstances it is something that can happen because yeah. they're like they're literally just like there and all of a sudden they just decide to cross like there is no warning yeah, yeah. signs i mean sometimes you can kind of read them but exactly. it's very often they're just like i just decided now and it's like why why would you do this yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. just to walk up on the road so I, i'm always super stressed now walking like with uh, like driving and a sea sheep close to yeah. the road after this happened um 
And there it was just, yeah, I, I really couldn't have done anything because yeah. of the, the fog and the conditions. Understandable. Um, but it's like when you drive and you see it, yeah, it's like, oh, fuck, yeah, you really like just, you know, slow down, yeah. maybe honk the horn. Yeah, or exactly. Hope they <laughs> startled and run away or something. Even though you don't want to stress them out. No. Uh, so it's like, you can just go, uh, or just like go really yeah. slow. I've, I've stopped it. many times, especially <laughs> in the West Fjords. I was in East Fjordavid for three weeks. And I was driving in from Sudavik to Isa Fjordavid for like maybe a week or something. And the sheep were on the road. And so often I would just stop because they were just, they, first they were laying there and you see one just getting up. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, I'm going to yeah, stop yeah, immediately exactly. and just see. <laughs> and it was usually nothing, but it's yeah. just, yeah, like you're saying, it causes anxiety because you're not yeah. trying to harm them. If anything, you're just, you're being yeah. like, go, no, go, exactly. go over there, yeah. be safe. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it's like, yeah, they just run around minding their own thing. Don't really care about it. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of people who are first timers coming to Iceland, what do you recommend for them? Because there are so many people who who obviously are interested in coming and they want to do the things that they see on Instagram, for instance, but some things are more possible than others. Like for instance, I would I don't recommend for most people to do river crossings if you don't know how to do those, right? So no. like what what kind exactly. of things no. do you think first timers should do? Yeah, so I agree with you. Definitely not the river crossings. And I uh, just want to add a warning because people, first timers, still end up doing it. And there, there are a lot of people who get into mm -hmm. trouble uh, by cr crossing rivers. And especially in a place called Postmark, where there are very many rivers to cross to get into the valley. And uh, and every every year there are so many rental cars that get totally destroyed mm -hmm. in the river. And uh, and if you end up end up uh, ruining a rental car in the river, there's no insurance. Nope. So you actually have to pay for the entire yeah. car. Which is pretty dire. It's really expensive in Iceland <laughs> so too. Anyone, <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah. So for anyone listening, thinking about that, you said not yeah. do that. Uh, um, <laughs> so what you should do as a first timer, like it depends, of course, how much time you have available. Um, and what I what I tend to see is a lot of people come and they start like first time they do Reykjavik and maybe like add in like the Golden Circle or the South Coast, and then and then they get a taste of Iceland and they want to come back and then they they, they probably. The second trip they do the ring mm -hmm. road around Iceland. A third time they probably do oh we have to do the West Coast also, and then the fourth time they do the yeah. Iceland, so something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so that's like a good way, obviously, to kind of get into it because, um, and it, uh, of course it also depends on the time of year. So traveling in Iceland in the summer is very easy. It's very easy to get around. So even if you come here like in the summer and if you it's your first time and you have like a week or 10 days uh, ideally closer to 10 mm -hmm. days i mean it's great to do the, the ring road around iceland it's super beautiful and you can really like yeah just get like so like a really good taste of everything that iceland has to offer um so that's totally amazing like do it maybe like with the with the camper van for example um or stay there are also a lot of beautiful hotels yeah. so if your budget allows for it you can also, of course travel around stay in some really amazing locations uh all around yep. Iceland and experience like amazing geothermal baths. So I would say like if you if you want to do Iceland properly and you come the first time and you have ten days and you have a good budget, I would say do the ring road. And uh, yeah, stay in like some of the towns that have like beautiful uh, geothermal baths, mm -hmm. for example. Um, like in Husvik. And uh, that, that's <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah exactly you have Husvik GOC, which is super mm -hmm. beautiful. So you have. Uh, like Vök bath, which I was recently in, in the East yeah. Iceland, in Eistadir, and you have the one in Husavik, you have Kreima in West Iceland, yeah. and a lot of other ones, so it's a lot of, lot of really cool The Blue Lagoon, places. of course, I mean, everyone, that's yeah, like the exactly, <laughs> most yeah. famous one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, uh, so that's really good, and of course, if you have less time, and it's like a long weekend or something, um, I think the recommendation is probably also influenced by COVID, you don't, maybe could not, wouldn't have to spend so much time in Reykjavik, because Reykjavik is really amazing and there are a lot of great restaurants and like cool things happening in the city and there's less like of those cool things happening right yeah. now because of the pandemic and the social distancing and uh, companies going out of yeah. business which is really yeah. sad um, so I mean you could yeah try to support those that still are there and spend some time in Reykjavik but also of course the magic is also that you can go away where um, there are very few people and feel relatively right. safe so even just coming, staying for a couple of days in Reykjavik in a nice hotel and doing the South Coast or Snapping this Peninsula is also a great way to get like mm -hmm. a taste of Agreed. Because there are black beaches, glaciers, uh, cliffs, and there's so much of everything you need. Yeah, it's called a microcosm, or at least I've heard this, of Iceland. 
the San Francisco Peninsula because yeah, of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause it has really everything. Yeah. yeah ge- there's like, yeah, geothermal uh, hot springs and yeah. And you can do that in a day. It's a long, also. it's a lot of driving, but you can do it. In a yeah. Day. yeah. 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 You know. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, ideally you do it maybe in the night, for example. Mm. So if you have like a long weekend, you can stay in Reykjavik for like, you know, one or two nights and then stay one night on Stephanus and then, you know, you could finish the trip and go to the airport or stay maybe one night on the Reykjavik Peninsula. Yeah. And maybe have time to tour a little bit there, which is also very underrated. Yes, uh, yes. Because everybody comes to Iceland and they, it's like, okay, they go straight like to the south coast or to Reykjavik mm-hmm. and just drive through this beautiful peninsula without seeing anything that's yeah. there. They drive by it. They don't even realize that they're like on the, so you're on the Reykjavik, as soon as they drive by, you're on the Reykjavik Peninsula when you yeah. arrive into Iceland at the Keflavik airport. And you're seeing like mostly what you're seeing is like, oh, okay, this is very um, lava rocky. You know, you, you don't really get the sense of how exactly. beautiful this area is because the airport is just in yeah. this place that they can have as much land as possible. But yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I agree. It's there's so many cool places to see. It really is, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Regarding taking pictures, because obviously this is what you do for a living. So I think people like myself or other <laughs> people who really want to get great photos, particularly of the Northern Lights, because Iceland, in essence, like if you have mm-hmm. decent lighting, your iPhone or smartphone, whatever you use, will get you a good photo or video. But the Northern Lights, for a lot of yeah. people, has posed to be a very tricky thing. So what do you suggest uh-huh, gear wise yeah. like you know if you had a, only a smartphone what do you yeah. suggest what type of camera if you have you know yeah. extra funds for that yeah well so there, there's definitely like that's like um it's it's photographing in the northern lights is like i would say relatively technical like if you want to get it right and that's obviously why it can be quite hard for people to do especially the first yeah. time and uh, so it's quite technical so you need to know exactly what to do settings wise and then it might also uh, put uh, be a little bit more like dem- gear demanding, so you might need like a more expensive mm-hmm. lens and ideally a, a better camera. And I'll get into what I mean with those things. Um, so it is like overall like a bit more demanding, and uh, um, and it, I would say it's yeah relatively technical. I would say more important though is like if you really want to take a, a good northern lights photo, you should not just think about the northern lights. You should think about the surroundings because. Mm. Another light photo of just another light is not very. It's not so. It's very. It's very interesting for you and the first time, and it's very interesting kind of from a memory perspective. Right. And it's like you know goes in the memory bank as the first time you saw the other lights and you had this cool photo. But to be quite honest, a, a photo of only the other lights is not very interesting. <laughs> like unless it's like the sky was like exploded, like in the whole yeah. thing. Like it has to be. It has to be really, really, really good. So uh, I'm I'm a bit picky on all the lights photos. I have to admit. Uh, so I, I would say for the non lights photos, you should think about your surroundings. So you need to be in a in a really good spot, ideally where there's no light pollution. Mm. So far away from Reykjavik or any big mm. city. I mean, there are not the big cities in Iceland, so it's mostly mostly Reykjavik. Um, but far away from artificial mm. lights, and and then you should think about yeah, like choosing an interesting spot where you could get something something cool like that you use kind of to frame the non lights mm. or kind of to work with interplay with the non lights or you can throw in your car or a person or a flashlight or a beautiful mountain or rocks or uh, a lagoon or a, a pool or something for reflection there's so many cool things but so think about the surroundings for like first and I, w- I would say super importantly of course and in like non lights are very beautiful and getting any photo is beautiful but if you really want to kind of take it to the next level like if we're kind of talking about really like photography i would say like really kind of think about where you would do it. And and then you also have to think about kind of like even the, the way the Noah lights gonna come from east mm-hmm. to west and the kind of stress across yeah. the sky. So there, there are a lot of things to think about. Um, so that that's something that I would think a lot about. So I don't always like, um, I kind of gave up, gave up on photographing Northern lights unless I'm in a really, really cool spot. Okay. Then I just like go out and enjoy them. Maybe like try to sit in the hot tub <laughs> and look at them, drink a cold beer or something. It's really nice. Um, but if I'm in a very epic place, I was like, I would be very excited to try to get the normal. Yeah. Um, but I've become way more picky with Okay. Uh, and that's obviously a luxury luxury thing when you live here and you see the normal lights. Yeah, times. definitely. Um, but when you see it, and, and it, it's and it's so fun to see normal lights for people who see it for the first mm-hmm. time. Um, so, but, my, my, but if you really want to kind of take your photography to the next level and your Instagram and all these things, you should really think about where would you be uh, to see the normal lights. Um, and it could be like with a beautiful mountain in the background, something that's gonna be really yeah, cool. definitely. 
uh, that would be my that would be my advice. And then there's of course the gear part and the technical part. But there's just like a lot of things to think about even even just like before mm -hmm. that. So uh, so if you can get the location right and like really cool subject and like maybe some playing with other lights like light from your car or person. Like I have some photos with like a person on standing on the car with an other lights exploding Ooh. above, for example, which nice. would be nice. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then the landing is quite photogenic, so like if you have you know something cool that you can throw into the the frame, that can be really fun. Um, so artificial lighting can also be interesting to work with, like uh, for normal lights. But then gear wise, so um, I would say again, you probably have to have relatively uh, wide angle mm -hmm. lens, so closer to like a super wide angle okay. lens, because um, you want to get a lot of the sky in, and also basically uh, the kind of way it works is that you can get with a wider angle lens, you can get away with um, like you have less, you know, um, camera mm -hmm. shake because it's wider. So the longer you focus, the more camera shake. Okay. So you can get away um, with uh, less camera shake, and because uh, sometimes even on a tripod, it can be windy and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it can be a bit cumbersome. Um, so that obviously makes it easier. But you can just get like, for example, a lot of the surroundings and the sky because you need to be really wide to be able to get you know all this normal lights up here and something cool going on mm -hmm. down there. So. Um, depending on exactly you know what system you're with, the and if you're shooting full frame camera or or like a APS-C or like a cropped sensor, um, then yeah, I would say yeah, go like super wide angle lens. So something like from a sixteen to thirty five, or now the new one with Canon is fifteen to thirty five, wow, yeah. and you can go like a fourteen millimeter lens or what is it 10, 10 or twelve? I don't know. I don't have anything yeah. wider than fifteen, um, but that's quite wide. And then, so a 15, like uh, 15 to 35 is the one I use, I would use for nano lights. So like, um, I think for most cameras, there's like a 16 to 35 uh, millimeter mm -hmm. lens, then you can really get like a lot of surroundings and, uh, and a lot of sky. And also the wider, um, the wider the lens is, the sharper the photo is gonna mm. be. So it's also easier to get the focus right. Um, so um, so then, yeah, you have to have like a tripod, which is also super important for normal lights. Uh, the iPhone can actually shoot, and I think maybe like some of the Google phones can shoot normal lights hand yeah. uh, which is pretty yeah. amazing with some algorithm taking multiple photos and kind of aligning them. It's pretty cool, actually. So because you asked me about the phone. Yeah. So, so the iPhone can do pretty good, um, can do pretty good uh, normal lights photos. I'm just going to show you because um, you can, do it uh, manually. Okay. So I didn't prepare anything to show you here, uh, particularly, but um, I didn't prepare either this, but now I'm just thinking about it. So in the top of your screen, you have this kind of like night mode, like if, if for example, I covered here, I think you yeah. see it. Yeah, the night okay. here. So you can press that okay. thing, and then you can actually set how long the exposure should be uh, on your camera. Mm. So normally the camera just does it like, you know, automatically and like, and it wouldn't really do so well with another device, I think. So you could, you know, take it, um, like press the thing here in the top the yeah. thing, and then you can choose you can then choose here in the night uh, you can choose here oh, how does it work um, okay yeah uh, sorry okay I'm just <laughs> here on the, okay I'm showing the screen okay so you can choose here how long you want the exposure to be so uh, make it as long as possible maximum okay. and then the phone uses at the same time the algorithm mm. uh, or whatever it is happens and and uh, creates like a low light photo which is pretty has become pretty nice. amazing and I wish that that modern cameras would incorporate some of that technology with with the larger sensor and the, the yeah, and with a tripod so as well. Or you're like just saying just holding it with this setting. Ha handheld, what? handheld on the phone is pretty is pretty okay. good. Like, I have seen photos of people like on horseback from the new iPhone, <laughs> and uh, okay. that's a, that would be a, a technically very difficult yeah. photo to take. Uh, and very I'm gonna try that. Yeah, because I pretty cool. yeah. <laughs> I'm planning to get like a better camera, but not a DSLR. Yeah. You know, like I'm not like I'm not at that level because I don't need to, right? So there are many people like myself. Who, yeah. there, of course, there are gonna be people who watch this to go like, yeah, awesome technical yeah. stuff. And then there's gonna be people like me. It's like, what's in my hand right now? My iPhone. I'm gonna, you know, yeah. I'm gonna do my best. Yeah, with that exactly. Because, so try yeah. that. That's uh, that's something that ever, that most people have, and just you know and. And surprisingly, the iPhone is, is now become better than many cameras that you can buy, like that are kind of entry level yeah. cameras. I would say incredible. So you would have to basically buy a really good camera for for it to be worth it almost. So you you would then rather think about shooting raw on the phone, mm. which you can do also, and that gives you a lot of abilities to then like also further work with the image files that you capture. On yeah, the phone. nice. 
Okay. So that's a good yeah. tip. So then go me- like kind of like uh, long exposure in the sp- the, the smartphone settings yeah. and, the, and then shooting raw, which I think you can uh, in that mode. I'm not sure. Um, that's something I would have to check. But if you could merge the two, that would be Yeah, cool. awesome. Regarding... And Ooh, otherwise, so... Yeah, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Fine. I was going to say, and then, of course, there's like, uh, if you if you then are choosing the camera direction, then you need a tripod and you need to have, uh, I would say, like, a better, the, the better camera you have, the better it's going to, easier it's going to be because you also need to bump up the ISO. Mm. And so it's basically the light sensitivity of the sensor and, and really expensive and really good modern cameras uh, can shoot at very high ISO, like very high light sensitivity. Mm-hmm. And get very little noise, mm. so that's just, that makes it a lot easier. And even with some of them, I would say now, like if you have like uh, stabilization within the camera and in the lens, and a very um, and a very uh, wide lens, and because there's less camera shake on the wide angle, you could almost shoot no lights handheld with some of the really modern cameras, which is pretty crazy. But the light, lights would have to be quite yeah bright to yeah. Do that. Ideally, you have to okay do yeah okay. I think tripod is easy. Like I have like a little one. That's just for my phone, and that yeah. works perfectly. So, okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> what about advice that you have? I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say that. So also, what really fun is though, like, so I love the tripod, but I also like I, myself. Uh, like, I'm very much like, kind of like throwing myself into conditions. Like, it's very dynamic, like the way I travel and shoot. So often the tripod doesn't really work so <laughs> well with, with my temper. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. What about advice that you have for people who want to be influencers? Uh, yeah, so I think um, most important is, I think it's very important to think about like what kind of uh, influencer or what kind of influence you want mm-hmm. to have. So there are like a lot of influencers that are influencers just because of money. And I think they're like some, some like in some people's eyes, like being an influencer has almost become a little bit stigmatized, which I think is very sad in a way, actually, because I think there are a lot of influencers doing really, really yeah. good work. Um, but like, think about what kind of influencer you would want to be like. And I think it's so important to like, you know, think about and, and maybe even define like, what are your values mm. as an influencer? And it shouldn't just be like, oh, make money, make money, get famous. <laughs> but it should be like, actually having like a real influence because you have to always think about like, there are actually people watching this yeah. and there are people who are influenced because you are an influencer. Mm-hmm. So you're having influence. So people being influenced by this. So you should think about what are really the, the values that you want to like share and have like influence people with, I would say. So I, I would say like, think about the, the values is super important uh, as an influencer. And like, and there are so many like interesting values that you can promote and talk mm-hmm. about while doing like paid work. So you can do it. It could be like about the environment. It could be about self improvement or health or whatever. And some, of course, it's very important like to have integrity and like authenticity in what you do because maybe people sometimes also might think that an influencer is just trying to push whatever, mm-hmm. because, you know, which many of them do, something. unfortunately. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So it's very like important to think about like authenticity. Mm-hmm. I would say so. Um, and and to have that kind of credibility yeah. um, so so think about yeah your, your values is super important like to become an influencer i would say or at least like if i the new generation of influence i would wish like would really think about yeah. that um like about their value yeah. sets so it's great advice um, and then obviously and then obviously it's really important like to be an influencer like now like micro influencing has has become a mm-hmm. thing and also we're thinking about that you don't necessarily need as many followers as um as you think mm-hmm. you so a lot of companies will be interested in working with you even just because you know sometimes sometimes we are more influenced by the people who we know personally and the close circle mm-hmm. um, rather than kind of something that seems a bit abstract and people who are like i don't know they are traveling fancy jets around the world and this and that and you, you almost you can't really relate to it anymore so i think a lot of brands have thought about that that it's much more relatable if it's the people who are kind of more your close friends. Yeah. So think about that. You don't necessarily need so much as you think you do to be an influencer. Um, you might just need, you know, a good idea and and a cool concept mm-hmm. and and a good pitch or a deck yeah. or something to send to a company. And being and consistent uh, as well, money. right? That's another piece. Yeah. Yes, exactly, for sure. And that goes like also with the kind of authenticity part, I would say, like if you're consistent. Yeah, uh, authentic. yeah. And then obviously persistent too. Yeah. So authentic, consistent, and consistent, because <laughs> you're also, you know, there, 
there are a lot of, a lot of people out there trying to reach out to companies and uh, it's always very good to try to put yourself in the shoes of whoever it is that you're reaching out to so imagine like everybody who reaches out to them think that they have you know the best mm-hmm. skills or the best pictures or like the best idea and try to think about what what is it really that this person needs like you know because in the end, like the, they are, they are employees sitting making decisions that should be whatever is best for the brand or the company, or however they can make use of their budget, right. like in the best possible way. So I was trying to think about, you know, put yourself in the shoes of the recipient mm-hmm. also. So, uh, you know, just think about really what makes you unique and what is it that you can add and offer instead of just trying to make too many words and too many fanciness, but just make it really like. Uh, um like yeah very very personal and authentic i would say and very simple because also all these people they have it's like a the the kind of um like signature of our world today everybody has too much information and too much going on and all the things like we're being bombarded by things all the way all the time so most of these key decision makers um they are also being bombarded with information and they have you know meetings nonstop. Mm-hmm. especially now everybody's on zoom meetings all mm-hmm. the time and they don't have time to make very complicated decisions. So you need to make it like you need to spoon feed them with whatever it is that you're going to do. That's yeah, really cool. Agreed. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. That would be my advice. And then, then obviously have killer content and killer ideas. Exactly. Too. You got to You got to show and, the good. And bigger right? Like what, what are you? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Results. Is yeah. there a place that you would love to go to in Iceland that you have not been to yet? And you're just like, man, I can't wait to get to this place. Uh, Yes. Uh, th- so there are some, some of them I would say are more on okay. <laughs> I love it. That, it's I, like... that, I'd like to reta- that I'd like to retain the wow factor okay. until that I've been okay. there. Because it's like, oh yeah, and you, you know, sometimes like, um, I'm, very, I, I'm very good at coming up with ideas and, uh, and sometimes I just need to guard them closely uh, until enough. that I feel I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that I don't want to share it with people, uh, but there are some, some things that I think are really, really cool uh, that, that I'd like to uh, uh, kind of ca- catch people with surprise yeah, okay. about. Um, with some, with Sarah, pretty, uh, pretty stunning, pretty cool, I would say. Like my mind is sometimes blown by these places and there are some things that I like to do. And, but I definitely like to come with something concrete too. Um, so, um, let me think. This is a harder um, question, isn't so it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, like... yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, so they're, they're definitely like, you know, I want to come back to uh, places that I don't come often enough and that are hard to get to. Like, for example, uh, it's called Hotstrandil mm-hmm. in the West mm-hmm. Fjords. So, it's like you have the West Fjords, which is like, if you picture Iceland like a sheep, and it's like on the head, and then just above yeah. a little bit. So you have this like very remote part of Iceland, and uh, and they're like, um, it's an Arctic Fox Nature Reserve, and it's very, very beautiful. So I'd like to spend a lot more time okay. there, um, and get to, um, yeah, explore that part. And do more sailing in mm. Iceland, too. And there are a lot of cool things that you can basically only access and okay. see from uh, the coast. So there, the coastline sometimes in Iceland is pretty amazing and and you really need to get either perspective from a drone or a boat to yeah. see it so there are a lot of cool things i like to do and i was actually supposed to do one of them this year but it was canceled because of the yeah. pandemic but supposed to do like a summer solstice sail mm-hmm. um around the arctic circle from Husavik actually wow. and uh, explore some of the the coastline there where you can't get by car there's a grimse beautiful island some beautiful cliffs and like way a lot of wildlife and things like that so that's something i really like nice. to, uh, that i'm so I was excited about that, and I was kind of bummed out when it was canceled. At the same time, I didn't feel like going <laughs> because of the, the, the pandemic. So uh, hopefully next year. Yeah. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Okay, last question, which is kind of my signature question, and that is, okay. what is your favorite Icelandic word or phrase? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, uh, again, I totally don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so that's gonna make it authentic also so I'm just gonna come whatever like comes to my mind but they're like and it, and it's almost like it's always like a tendency to almost go a bit cliche here but the, sometimes the cliche is there for a reason too but um like in in the, like growing in Denmark um things are very structured and organized and uh, like very much like well planned and it's like you know um People never like you don't don't show up late for meetings. Mm. You don't miss a deadline, and you just like you're very like um, like 
I, I would say square headed because it sounds more negative. So it's not like that, but it's more like very structured. Yeah. And it's almost like a bit like a picture like like Germans also are very like Danish, for example, are kind of like the Nordic Germans. They are very <laughs> organized, very well structured, <laughs> very kind of like planned out. And that's really that's you know overall very nice. But in Iceland, you know where you, where you live on the um, like almost the mercy of nature mm-hmm. at least sometimes, not all the time. But uh, like you never know what's gonna happen. And historically, it's been very hard to plan things. And you're definitely on the mercy of nature when there's a volcanic eruption or when there's a, like an avalanche or where there's a crazy storm that's gonna blow up your roof yeah. or whatever. Like you, you never know what's gonna happen. And uh, and uh, so it's very hard to plan things in Iceland. So like, wh- when you are in total control, like you know, and you know nothing's gonna happen crazy with the weather or well, uh, like even like with traffic or anything, because for example, Denmark, everything is very organized. So you know, you you're not gonna have very many surprises. Um. So, but here anything can happen. Mm-hmm. I would say, and I really love that. But it's also like it kind of forces like uh, you know your, yourself to alter your mindset and your expectations a bit. So. There is a saying in Icelandic that that mm-hmm. and that's what I'm saying. It's a bit cliche, and I'm sure somebody <laughs> said it on your. On a decent amount of people, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I at least I can hopefully explain it well, because um, I really love it. But I now try to think of another one too, <laughs> to sprinkle in something new. But but I will explain why though. And so I feel like, especially like in many people and maybe some of your listeners, they also they live in big cities where life has become very stressful and. Uh, and you have like you know ex- exactly like back to back meetings and all these deadlines and everything happening and and with that that does it means that things are gonna work mm. out and like Icelanders are often like late and not 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 very organized and if you're like a bit late for the meeting nobody's gonna like look at the clock well, who are you like coming so unless late you're from another country like, then you're like what is going on here <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> exactly if it's with Icelanders then probably yeah. not. most yeah. likely not. Um, <laughs> So they're pretty pretty laid back about that and uh, and about many things and it's also for good and bad I would say because it's a bit of a like that's why I say you have to shift some things internally with your mindset because it can be very frustrating also if you are more like you know I'm also like uh, okay I, I I wouldn't say I'm the most structured person in the world but I'm also like I have sometimes more structured than the average Icelander mm. in my work and my business I would say and. Uh, and uh, it can be frustrating sometimes when you're trying to like make things happening on the tight and then you know tatarata's kind of like is taking over and but it works that, that most things always work out and you can you can arrange crazy things with short yeah. notice in Iceland it's unbelievable like he called somebody like 11 p.m. Like, fuck i need this tomorrow like can we handle this and like whatever then they all go and call everybody else and then and then suddenly like the next day you will have this organized yeah. whatever and it works when it works it works it's to- works total magic i would say um and it also just um, like takes the edge of the kind of stressfulness of everyday life sometimes because you feel like things don't have to be perfect. Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. So I like that. Um, so, and I've actually, I've thought it so far, uh, and that's why I still think it's good to mention it, like Tatera does, because like you have, like in the US, for example, you have the concept of Kuka. It's a Danish concept of, uh, of this kind of like getting cozy and like uh, getting together and kind of enjoying small things in life and like whether it's like a cup of coffee and you just kind of it's like a mindset really you find this kind of cozy like rest resting um place in yeah. life and it's often involving food and french friendship and like you know imagine like candles and just like hanging out on the couch maybe with a fireplace or something yeah like that. so and it's like a very cultural thing and so that demo is, is and it's kind of taking over uh, it's becoming popular in the u.s i know mm-hmm. at least uh, especially like on the east coast and uh, like in new york for example a lot of you can find a lot of books about Hugo, and uh, and uh, I love Hugo, and I think one day Cataratas might become mm-hmm. a thing like Hugo as well. So it's like you know, just like be a bit more crazy and take the edge off yeah. things, and uh, not you know things are not gonna work out. But it, it's obviously for Cataratas to work out, it requires kind of the same mindset from both mm-hmm. sides because otherwise it's not necessarily yeah Kataratas. exactly. So that's what works so well in Iceland is that. Every, almost everybody has the mindset that it's you know yeah you can figure things out last minute and it's okay like if it's not perfect we will just figure it out and often, most of the time it turns yeah out. from yeah and my <laughs> can also totally fall through yeah exactly <laughs> but my like interpretation of it or at least how I utilize that that is I'm like okay I've done everything I can because some people are just like whatever I didn't do anything to prepare it will be fine but for me it's 
like I did everything I can and literally it's just going to work out. Like I got to leave it, you know, I got to go away from it. Even though I feel yeah, like that's a yeah. much more, you know, just because I like to control things, <laughs> it's a mindset that like, if, yeah. if, if, if I can put it that way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like that <laughs> way more open. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Well, it's healthy, but it, it can be, definitely be a cultural shock when you come to Iceland. And I have to say for me, it was a, like uh, coming like, even as I kind of like I like I thought I was Icelandic yeah. coming to Iceland uh, in a way, and it was a culture shock for me too, yeah. like having grown up in Denmark. And I was I thought it was you know it was quite hard in the beginning. Now I, I don't blink. Yeah, it, <laughs> honestly, but but I used to find it you know somewhat frustrating also. Um, but less and less now. And then, but there are, so you have these kind of like concepts like that. Um, and there's also this concept like right now. Uh, I will then put in some, it relates to very much where I am in my personal okay. life right now with the babies and everything. So, and it also relates even to my work. So there's a, a concept in Icelandic uh, or a word called lula. lula. So like you, you know, you, it's to lula. It's like to, to basically take a little, it's like a sweet word for saying sleep, sleep or nap. Like, uh, so I think if I a lula, uh, don't you want to go lula? Uh, you can say like, to yeah. or something like, so they, like in a sweet way, nice way, go, go and sleep. And that's my uh, uh, maybe favorite or most hated word. I don't know because right now I I feel I have, I'm in the visit of Lula. And <laughs> in the and business of Lula, like, <laughs> like please go take a nap. So, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So like either I want them to Lula or myself. Uh, they, if they, the more they can Lula, the more yeah, I can Lula true. Too. So true. everyone. And then I and then I work with a company that has a product called the Lula doll. Uh, and that is the doll that helps uh, babies uh, sleep. Okay. So I've tied in a project that we're working on right now um, that is like for babies and it's like for, I mean, it's for yeah. babies <laughs> to, to <laughs> make their life easier. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, to help uh, help sleep, uh, help the baby okay. sleep. So Lula is pretty important in my life yeah. right now too. So that's another word that I really like uh, or that comes yeah. to mind. Awesome. And uh, I think Lula is also like a cultural thing uh, almost in Iceland because like most kids they go and lula in the stroller mm -hmm. outside uh, you see all these little kindergarten uh, or like uh, sorry like uh, baby strollers uh, outside and uh, it's almost like yeah lula associates with kind of like sleeping and fresh air and resting and somehow like feeling you know refreshing um, yeah it is a concept I talked about this in my eight strange habits of Icelandic people a couple of years ago in a video about allowing babies to sleep outside and how like people just like go in their houses. Yeah. I mean, granted you can hear them, but it is not like you're like mm -hmm. literally watching them the whole time. And you know, it's no, shocking no, no, for no, people no. from the U S and like many different other places. It's like, what you leave a baby outside. And it's like, yeah, I I'm still not yeah. like used to it. Meaning I see other people do it and that's fine with me. But if I were to have a kid, I'm not so sure if I could do it. You know, like it feels like, oh no, yeah, I, <laughs> I just can't leave her alone. That's what that's what you think now. So wait until you're really tired and you just <laughs> so to stay asleep. <laughs> then you then you might uh, give yeah. it a try and think, oh my god, they slept for three hours <laughs> and you don't have to do anything. Just rock yeah. them a little bit. You don't have to take them up and blah blah, blah everything. So give them in a the stroller. You don't have to take them up. Just little rocking and they stay asleep uh, possibly for a three hour nap which is nice. quite nice um, and we yeah we don't have we don't use a baby monitor but we can definitely yeah. hear them and uh, but it's also like you're more stressed like with the first child then we were using the baby alarm mm. often out there but now we just keep the crack door and like my sister they have you know like a baby monitor with the camera and all wow. this kind of stuff that's more the yeah yeah thing. so definitely. you would be like see on what's going on like oh they're up or yeah whatever it's like no no if they ain't crying, they just stay there a little bit longer. It's like you wait to listen. It's like, they stop crying? Okay, good. It's fine. <laughs> it's yeah, like, exactly. Just, yeah, I've, I've babysat a, a decent amount, and it's just like, wait a second. Okay, they're good. And then like... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally, yes. Maybe they're just dreaming or something. And, and sometimes they're they're not really awake, but they start making some fuss, yeah. and then they just because they lost a pacifier or something. and just Exactly. Put it back in and let them roll yeah. a bit longer. So Lula is a... It's a cute Icelandic, it's a very cute word, and uh, and it's also like kind of culturally kind yeah. of cool. Yeah, and easy to say, yeah. so that's nice. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Much easier yeah. than that. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, good <laughs> enough. this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your insights on being an influencer, your journey, your, you know, uh, expertise, and your advice on many <laughs> different things. So I'm, I'm sure, especially when it comes to the Northern Lights, 
people and what you know first timers should do people will be really excited to kind of write that down and get that information and i of course will have your instagram handle so people can follow you uh, in the description box there will be any links to any other things that you want to link to if people want to check those things out mm -hmm. so yeah thank you so much super nice well thank you so much for having me for these fun questions it was really awesome cool. my pleasure <laughs>